Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Camel Guys Detail Garage. It's part two on our Lexus GX470 and it's time to tackle the interior. This interior is completely neglected. It has different types of components as vinyl, wood grain, leather. And in this video, we're gonna show you guys how to properly clean them up and protect them. Stay tuned. Woo! And we're back. So now it's time to clean up the interior. But before I get into the process of cleaning the interior, I just want to remove all the large objects and put them in a plastic bag. Especially if you're working on any other vehicle that is not your vehicle. The reason behind it is, is because you don't know if certain belongings can be in your way and you don't want to misplace them. So that's why we recommend putting them in a bag. So even though it might be trash or recycle, put it in here. So if a customer comes back to you and asks you, hey, where can I find my glasses? Where can I find this? You could just tell them, they're, they're, I, I went ahead and placed them in the back, rear end of your car, which is your trunk, or I put them so, wherever you leave it. So I'll pick up the large items. This is going to make sure I clean the car properly. And you could also wear gloves. I recommend wearing gloves. Uh, I actually do not have gloves right now, so I just have to do it by hand. All right. so. I already went ahead and removed all the large items from the front. So this will be my front bag. I'll just place it down here for a bit. But now before I go ahead and begin start cleaning, you guys can actually come close and see that there's crumbs, there's everything in here. Is that dog hair? I think that's dog hair. But if I move the shift boot, you see all this grime, especially down here. Before cleaning up anything, we always recommend vacuuming out all the large items to make sure your cleaning process is a lot easier. So I'll go ahead and clean it up by vacuuming it and then I'll get back to you guys. You guys might say, Henry, why didn't you vacuum out the carpet first? The reason why I personally leave the carpet to last is because whenever it comes to cleaning out interiors, you might knock down more loose grime and debris onto the carpet. So this is why I don't want to work double. I'll get the carpet last. So I'll actually go ahead and take a seat in here. And now that I inspect the surface even more, I see there's food, there's still crumbs. There's a lot of things that are on here that are kind of disgusting to clean. But Here's a good example of what not to let your vehicle get to this point. The reason behind it is because over time, all of this could damage your plastics. Uh, sometimes it can't even come back. But today, we're actually going to show you guys how to bring it back. So the product I'll be using today is Nonsense. Nonsense is an all-purpose cleaner that works virtually on anything if it's diluted properly. If you want to use it on carpet, you can use it on carpet. You want to use it on your engine bay, use it there. Just be sure to dilute it properly. So I'm actually going to start from the left to the right. This is going to be all last. So let's get to it. I'll go ahead and get my gray workhorse microfiber towel. Let me inspect it to see if it has any tags. Since it does have a tag, I'll rip it off. Put it right there and I'll refold it. And the reason why I went ahead and got the 24 by 16 is because I have a pretty neglected interior and I want to have the most sides to work with. So I'll fold it once twice and now into a square so I'll get my nonsense I'll spray my nonsense onto my towel four sprays on here I'll put it on here and wipe down this part of the center console okay so now we're gonna work from this point on now I'll get my nonsense I'll spray it onto my all in the details interior brush Spray some in there and I'll scrub it out. What this does, it causes foaming action to happen. Nonsense. The cleaning power is going to help me bring it back to how it once looked just by simply scrubbing it back and forth. There are some cold holders that some cars have that you could just simply pull out. Those you could just pull out, clean them outside with nonsense. But in this occasion, these do not come out. Let me give it more of some cleaning power. So just scrub it back and forth. And you start to see that the foam is actually not clear. It's turning like this brownish color. That is all the grime, the food, the stains that this center console has. And honestly, it's kind of disgusting to let your interior get like this. But a lot of people actually do have daily driven cars that they really don't care about. But one thing 
I personally don't agree is like you could let the exterior car get dirty if you have a daily, but try to keep your interior clean. Uh, you spend the most time in the inside of your car, and this is gonna be. Well, wipe it off. You guys can see this grime come off. Come back in here. This is a perfect example of what not to do. Do not let your insert get to this point. Uh, it's gonna be harder to clean over time. And in the long run, it could damage your interior. Just grab it. Make sure we get everything. Put my brush down, get my towel, and clean it back up. This part looks pretty clean. Now we're gonna move on to this e-brake. The e-brake has a sleeve over it. I already started scrubbing it and you could, you could see that filth on there. The, the foam is not clear anymore. I'll get a little bit more and just scrub it down. Just so I can make sure. And these areas should be clean constantly. Why? Because you're constantly touching them and you want to remove any dirt, grime, debris that may be on the surface. Scrub it down. So to clean the bottom portion of the e-brake, I'll go ahead and just spray my towel with nonsense. One, two, lift it up and just clean it. On some cars, it'll be easier to clean because the e-brake stays up, but this e-brake does not stay up, so it'll be a little bit more difficult. I'll go ahead and close it. And now you have this stripe right here. Whenever you're cleaning your brushes in between, just grab your bristles clean them up, make sure there's no filth on them, and then move on. Spray my brush and just scrub it out. Scrub out the shift boot. And remember, nonsense can be virtually used anywhere to clean anything, trims, undercarriage. Get that. And you'll see me flipping this towel constantly. The reason why is because I always want to get a clean side. Never be rubbing the dirty grime over a clean surface. So, then we got in there. Open it up, clean the shift boot. Close that up. So now we're moving on further down the line and we're at this shift boot now. This thing actually has so many shift boots. But before we actually go in there, you can see that this shift boot actually has makeup on it all right here that's makeup that's body oils that's a lot of grime so it's time to restore it and a lot of people don't realize it but we tend to touch a lot of things either at, we're at our house we're going at the grocery store we come back and we start touching our shift knobs we start touching everything and now it gets dirty over time and then it starts getting this neglected dull look and you get used to it so get your brush spray it on and just Massage it back and forth. And this ensures you properly clean everything. Put that down. Flip over to a clean side.
And you guys should see this thing. Look how clean it is. It's not dull anymore. I did mess a little bit in the front. So re-scrub it. And clean it up. You see, now it's clean. So I'll go ahead and twist it back straight. And now it's time to move on to these little buttons. I already have a, some nonsense inside my bristles. So all I have to do is just scrub it down. And this is why I leave carpet till last because all this grime filth that's splattering everywhere, it may land onto the carpet. And like this, I don't work double. So leave carpet till last. I'll go ahead. Wow, that's a big difference from how it was. And now we're moving on to the button. Same exact thing, get your nonsense. Just scrub it out. Let me get a little bit more cleaning power. One spray. Come back here. There you go. Make sure there's nothing on it. All right, so now it's time to move on to the buttons. The buttons can be a little bit more tedious because there, there is a lot of cracks and crevices to clean. So in this occasion, I'm actually not going to spray my brush. I'm only gonna spray my towel and wipe it down. The navigation screen, I'm actually gonna go ahead and get total interior cleaner to wipe it off because that's a little bit more safer and I do not want to damage it. So I'm, I'm done with this towel. I'll put this towel to the side. I'll get a new clean towel. Find the tag, rip it off, flip it. Put my towel up there. Spray my nonsense onto my towel and just wipe. Never spray directly onto the surface whenever you're working with buttons because you might get, get in the cracks and crevices and then it'll be a little bit more difficult to get out but if you do spray directly onto it and you do get it in the cracks and crevices, I recommend just getting a blower, blowing it out, and you're good to go. So now the buttons are clean, the wood grain's clean. I'll move this towel, put it right here for right now, and now it's time to clean the dashboard. Same exact thing, same exact method. Get nonsense, spray it onto here, and wipe it down. Nonsense is just the cleaner, it is not a protectant. So after this, if you wanna enhance the shine on your interior, I recommend getting a water-based dressing. The reason behind it is, is because it's dry to a touch, there's nothing too shiny, it's not gonna cause a glare while you drive. So, you clean it. Clean everything. Flip it over, clean the rest. Make sure there's nothing on it. So now I went ahead and cleaned up everything, but one key thing we're actually forgetting. I'm actually gonna be jumping over to that side and tackling the steering wheel because the steering wheel has body oils, lotion. I don't know exactly what it has on it, but it's dull. Like I'll show you guys the before and after. Let's get to that side. And now we're back on this side, the driver's side. And this steering wheel is the most touched part of the vehicle or on any vehicle because you need it to use it to steer. But if you guys can see, this is all body oils, sunscreen, dirt, grime, anything I think of the steering wheel has. Because what people tend to forget is, say for example, you just finished eating, you wash your hands, whatever, whatnot. You go touch this, then you touch that, then you go drive somewhere. 
all that is just going onto your steering wheel and it actually deteriorates the look of it. So if you have a steering wheel that's peeling, that is why it starts peeling because all the oils are getting to the steering wheel and they're deterring the finish. So get my non-tent, spray it on here. Come right here and just scrub it back and forth. And this restores the look of your steering wheel by removing all the oils. Come right here, scrub it out. I need a little bit more cleaning power. Make sure I get everything. Back here. Now I'll get my microfiber towel and wipe it off. And you guys can see how crazy that is. I just started cleaning up. Look at that. Now it's clean and it's got restored to its original look. You guys might say, you've missed a spot. But no, this is actually peeling and this is what happens when your oils actually get to the finish of the vehicle. This is what you do not want. You want it to keep it like so. Here's another rip. And this is, honestly, it takes little to like 15 seconds to a minute to clean up your steering wheel. Then you're constantly touching it. So this is why I recommend you do it like every other week, just because you don't know exactly where you're touching and you want to keep it clean as possible. A common question we always get is how do I clean my cluster? You have to be very, very, very careful when it comes to cleaning your cluster because the plastic is very sensitive. And if you actually come close, you can see these scratches. So the, pre the owner or the previous owner actually scratched it. They used the rough towel to go ahead and clean it. So now that I've finished cleaning up the center console, the dash, the navigation screen, everything in the front, it's time to tackle these bad boys right here. So now it's time to clean up the leather. Uh, if you actually look close right here, the leather is shiny and that is one thing you do not want. Leather is not supposed to be shiny, it's supposed to be more of a matte sheen to it. So if your leather is shiny and you have dark colored leather or even light colored leather, that means it's time to clean it up. So I'll put my applicator to the side, put my leather conditioner right there and we're actually going to be cleaning it using leather cleaner. Leather cleaner is a pH balance cleaner that is not going to remove any coating from the surface of your leather. So just spray it on there and I'll scrub it back and forth to remove anything that may be sitting on the surface of the leather. A lot of people tend to forget is leather is like skin. If you do not moisturize your skin, over time it's going to crack and it's going to basically turn like so. Let me get a little bit more cleaning power for that area. my leather cleaner down, my brush, I'll get my towel and I will wipe in one direction. Check that out. That's all that grime, body oils from denim jeans or even whoever drives this vehicle. Still see more coming out. Just like ensure a deep clean, I'll give it one more pass. Spray some onto my brush and I'll go back to it. So now that I cleaned the leather, you guys can see it is not shiny. This is shiny. This is more of a matte sheen to it. So now it's time to protect it using leather conditioner. Leather conditioner is a water-based dressing that has vitamin E in it. What is vitamin E? It's going to nourish your leather and keep it from cracking. You do not want this. 
So before using it, shake up the bottle. So you'll, you'll want to add two lines to your applicator. Put it right here. And you'll put it on your leather. Just rub it back and forth. And this ensures you nourish your leather. It looks good. Smells amazing, it smells just like leather. And it's not going to crack. But now I know you guys are gonna comment, your leather's shiny, your leather's shiny. No, I'll wipe it down right now, it's gonna turn into a matte sheen too. Apply it all around, put my applicator down, get my towel, wipe off any excess. And there it went, it's back to matte. If I rub it, it's dry to a touch. It's not oily at all. So if I sit in here, I'm not gonna be sliding around like a salamander. So now it's time to attack the rest of the seat. I'm actually gonna attack the driver's seat, the passenger seat, and the back seat. All right guys, so I just finished cleaning up the front part of the vehicle. Now it's time to tackle the back part, but you guys already saw how to clean it. So guys, if you guys like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, subscribe, share, and we will see you guys next time right here at the Camel Guys Detail Garage.